is Eloquent JavaScript. And it talks a lot about what um, I was talking about in uh, the other lectures. You know, it, uh, the, the other lectures I gave kind of examples of each little piece of code. But Eloquent JavaScript talks about how to write JavaScript, you know, basically from, from scratch. It's as if you're, you've never even taught. They, 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 they start from a person who's never coded at all. So it starts from no programming whatsoever. So we've kind of already covered values, types, and operators. We've already covered program structure. What I want you to look at is chapter three, functions. Now, this is going to blow your mind. I, I, unless you've had JavaScript before, it's, some of the stuff I'm about to show you is going to be not intuitive. And I'll try, to, I'll try to formulate some quiz questions so that you can kind of be prepared for this. But every language has its special things, but JavaScript does functions like no other. Probably the main reason is because they have first class functions, meaning a function can be treated like a variable. You can assign a function to a variable and um, to, 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 to an identifier, right? And you can, so I can, I can basically go here, I'll just go to Google here and I'll do an inspect. If you want to play around with this, go to the console. I can say uh, var, um, x gets function and I can say I can say um, um, return hello and now if you assign if you assign uh, a um, if you do an assignment like this, you're supposed to put a semicolon after it. Now, if you, in, in the console, a lot of times you don't have to do it, but but it will. You could get syntax errors if you tr if you put it in um, your code that way. If you put it in, so, so that if I type x, if I type x, it's going to give me the function definition as I just wrote it. If I say x with parentheses around it, it gives me the return. It, it executes that function just like you would expect, right? But but it's not too many languages where you can assign it. So I assigned, I assigned this function then open parentheses. But if you were doing that in Java, you would say, wait a second, you got to give it a name. Well, the name is X. Now I can also say um, function. So so you can, you can kind of see that this is an assignment statement, right? I'm assigning to a variable this thing function. And then there's there's no name here. It's, a, it's what's called an anonymous function. This is an anonymous function. There's no name, but I can just I can just define the function. I can say function uh, y, and then d define it the same way as you would other functions, right? Uh, and I'll say uh, return goodbye. And now this one you do not put the the, the semicolon after it. And if I say y, it gives me the function definition. And if I say y with parentheses around it, it gives me the return value of that function. So this is this is uh, uh, the first little chunk. Uh, you're, you're, you, you can do things with functions that you can't do. You can apply a function to a bunch of variables by just passing the function as a variable, as a parameter to a function to another function. It can be can be deeply embedded in there. So anyway. Um, how do you define a function? You can use this const keyword. We talked about the var keyword. The var keyword is the, the earlier version of Java. You can use let, you know, let some value, and you can use um, const. So var and let allow you to change it. So like if I say, if I go here and I say, um, oops, uh, if I say uh, const z uh, gets um, function and um, I just say return return z that's an assignment statement so if I say that now if I do z it gives me that that uh, thing and if I do this it gives me the z but if I say um, z gets 5 or whatever it says no, you can't do that because you've defined it as a constant. You can't change the value of it. 
I can't change it to another function or anything else. Once you've said const z, until I close this browser and everything like that, you, or release that variable, it's not going to be, you can't mess with it. It's a constant. It stays that way. Um, so here you can see that the, 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 they have this square function. So you can name, you know, if you name it, if you name it square, then, then you say square of 12, it gives you 144. Square now is a function. You can have multiple parameters and no parameters at all. Um, so this one has no parameters, and this one has multiple parameters. Uh, we can we can disagree or agree on what the is an argument versus a parameter, but you know just typically the argument would be what's actually passed, the values really passed, and now the parameters, whatever, is the theoretical possibility that can be passed. So I think you guys understand this. So now, <coughs> some functions produce a value, like power and square above there, some don't, like make noise, whose only result is a side effect. This might not seem very important right now, but as you advance in in the field, I mean, when you guys are 20 years in, when you guys are 20 year veterans of computer programming, and you've seen people come and you've seen people go and you've seen programming programs come, you've seen programs come, you've seen programming languages come and go, at some point you're not even going to be worried about the language anymore. It's just like, what is the concept that we're dealing with? And the concept of a value versus a you know, return value versus a side effect will be, in, you know, it'll be intuitive to you. Right? Like right now, if I was to ask you to, in, like in CS116, if I ask you to, um, to tell me in a 3PIO what's the input, what's the output, what's the processing, and what's the precondition and postcondition, right? These are things that, after you've programmed a lot, make more sense than whatever the syntax of the language you're dealing with is. But, um, you know, that might not get you any jobs in your job interview, <laughs> but it's the thing. So, a side effect would be something like, you guys saw console log? Do you remember that console log thing? So like, if we log something to the console, it's like doing a system.out.println in Java, right? You're printing something, but the program's not, re the function's not returning anything. So, so you could have a function that prints a whole bunch of things out, but only returns one value like an integer or something like that. So that's what a, a side effect. There's other side effects that can happen other than, than being, printing things out, of course. So, um, so basically, for the purposes of this conversation today, just consider the concept of a return value versus a side effect. And we'll just use the examples of, you know, 1 plus 1 equals 2. 2 is the return value, return 2, or return 1 plus 1. And then, like, system.out.println, or in this case, console.log, would be the side effect. Um, bindings. Now, <coughs> binding is a term that gets used in a lot of languages, in a lot of situations. But for the purposes of a, of a JavaScript function, a binding is going to be a, an assignment to a variable, to an identifier. So some identifier has whatever that identifier is, is this other thing. So we're binding this, um, <coughs> you know, it could be a function, it could be a number, it could be any number, anything. And the binding has a scope. So if I create a, if I create a variable inside of a function, a var, uh, and, but I have another one that's outside of that function, then the one internal is going to be the one that pre takes precedence. It's going to be local scope. Um, so you have local bindings, you have global bindings, and this is kind of, uh, you know, bindings are local. So, so, so we can see this if we go here. Uh, if I if I create a uh, function, do I have anything? No, no, let's create a function a. I'll say. Um, So here I got function x, and I'll say return x. And what's that going to do? Because what's that function a going to do? 
Right, so so if I say, so how would I write that? Anybody? A, say five, say. It's going to return five. So, so A is the function. If I do A, it's just going to give me the function definition, right? But if I, but, but if I say X, X is that other function that I wrote, right? So the X, this X that's here is local to the function A. Now, unlike in other languages, some languages you cannot create functions within functions. But JavaScript is routinely done. You might, obviously, because because functions are like ver values for, for variables. Just like you declare variables in a function that are only used for that function, you can define functions that are only used in that function. And it's very routinely done. Um, so let's go back here. So we have local scope, global scope, um, our local binding, global bindings, and let and const are local to the block. You can create blocks with uh, um, curly braces at will, but you can usually it's done within functions or some other thing. If it's inside of a loop, code before another loop cannot cannot access the values, just like I showed you in that function with x. Now, if I create, if I go here and I and I create. Um, um, Let's suppose I have, uh, what do I have in here, A, B, and C? Do I have, X, I have X, Y, and Z, X, Y, Z, A. I don't have B, right? If I, if, I do, oops, if I type in B, it says not defined. So if I, so, so if I create a, uh, uh, and if I think if I type C, it'll also say not defined. Okay, good. So now if I create a function B, I'll say B gets, um, Let's say uh, function, function, spell it right. And I'll give it, um, let's just say uh, D. I'll give it C. And I'll give it, yes, yeah, C. And I can say, um, you know, D gets 5. And then I can say uh, return C. And basically, what's going to happen in this function is it's going to assign the, the value. It's going to assign d a value of five, but d hasn't been declared yet. So if I say d right now, I don't know why it wants to do that? D is not defined. But if I run b, if I say b six, it's going to return six, right? But if I say d now, d is five. Why? Because if I don't put any any uh, let or const in front of this, it's going to make it global. That will weird people out when they're writing JavaScript too. Because all of a sudden your function, before you ran the function, the thing wasn't set. But after you ran it, it was set. Or worse, you forgot to make it local and you just set the global one. So now D has been set. If I if I um, if I do uh, if I run let's see if I say b gets function d and I'll say here d equals four so I just changed I just changed b so that d equals four and if I say d right now d equals five right if I run b again is it going to reset d mm -hmm. why. It's, as far as it's concerned, there's nothing about D that's special. It's, it wasn't declared local. But now what if I say, um, let D equal 4? So if I say D, it's got 5. I can even, I can even uh, I'll tell you what, I'll even, I'll even return D just to be difficult. D equals 4, return D. Better return four, right? Now, if I run that function, if I run run uh, b, b of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the return value is going to be four. D is five. You see what I'm talking about? Because I put the let in there, that made it local to that function. Hopefully, that will save you a lot of debugging time down the pike. 
Okay, so well, it it never changed. It never changed. That's the thing about it. It was always five. So in the function, I created a new d. It's a different d. It would be like you know, and, and I could I could actually create another function inside of this function b that creates another d. As long as the the, the let the let keyword, whoopsie daisy. Um, the let keyword tells you that it's local. If this because I didn't have any any let keyword there, mm -hmm. then that means that it's using the global value of d. And if it hasn't been specified yet, make one. That's it's like you don't have to declare anything in JavaScript. So just like if there is no d, just create it. Now that's the d for everybody. I know it's really it's. it's so like, when did you declare d to be five? I never did. I actually ran the function b, and the function b made it five over okay. here. So I, I, I made the function b, and I assigned d equals five, but because I didn't put a keyword in there, it created a global variable of five. Then I changed b to say d equals four. I actually changed b to say d equals four and then return d. So then if I type in b, if I, do, if I use b, the function which inside of it has the variable d, no matter what number I put in here, it's going to always give you 4 because the d doesn't matter. But then, but if I say d, there's a global d and that's 5. So it's important that you understand the, the, the scope of this. I mean, it's not the same as other languages, so it's important to be aware of that. Um, and of course, you can nest these as deep as you want. You can have scope within scope within scope. Um, and when you have that, that ability to nest the same variable name inside a whole bunch of depths, that's lexical scoping. It's, it's not a bad idea to read this. It's really a short chapter, but there's a lot in there. This, this chapter is something big. Um, now, functions and values, we talked about that. It doesn't specifically say first class function, but I think we'll, we'll talk about that a lot. It is a, you know, when, when, you, when a function can be treated like a variable, it's a first class function. Um, so, function binding means that the, the, the function identifier is, is the name for a code, a piece of code, some lines of program. Um, but there is a difference between the function and its name. I think you guys know that. Like I said, if you if you if you define it to be constant, then the function can't change. If you use the let keyword, then it can change. Or if you don't use anything at all, it can change. If you don't use if you don't use anything at all, it's a global variable. And if you use the let keyword, it's it's local in scope. If I was to do this in the main part of the program, then it would be global scope anyway. So there's three ways, there's actually three ways to define functions. One of them is to assign a function, an anonymous function to a variable name. And the other one is to declare a function like this. This is called a function declaration. And the third way is with the arrow operator, called arrow functions. So um, the arrow uh, comes after a list of parameters. And it's, a, it's probably a safe, a safe idea to put them in parentheses. But if there's only one parameter, you can put it just by itself without parentheses around it, but it might not might be easier. But like see this right here, oops, this right here is a function definition that's being assigned to the value to the identifier square one. So so saying you know x arrow then the function definition inside of the curly braces is the same thing as saying function x and then all this stuff. 
So let me show you. Let me show you an, an, an example. I was writing it earlier. Um, I think I, yeah, yeah here, here it is. So here we have. I have a um, a function here. I create this function called append a, and all it does is it appends um, the letter a to some string. You see that? This so if I if I run this this program map, it will append the letter a to all of the elements that are in this map. The map is a is a method that uh, performs a function on every element of an array. So you can say array dot map, and it performs that 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 function on all the elements of the array. So you could have used mod something, and you could get the the mod of of each one of the elements. Uh, but here just appends the letter A, and so this, so this append A is a function, right? This right here, when I say function, I've got a function definition, and append A means all of this, right? Or I can say function S return this, this, I can actually give it the function. Basically the function, it's not the function definition per se, but it's the, the, what you would assign to a variable. So like this right here, function space open parentheses s close parentheses space open close braces and with all this stuff in there, that is a function. That is a that could be treated like a value that you can pass to a variable. This is this is being passed to the map method. The map method takes what kind of data type as its argument, its parameter. It's a data type. It's not a primitive data type. Well, I guess it is a primitive data type. But I think function. Maybe it's not function. String. It, well, I mean, it, it's a special kind of a, of a of a string, but it's a function. But there's no quotation marks like you would have in a string. It's a function. That's what. The, the, it has to be a function. If you don't give it a function, it will give you an error. Now, append a. Is that a function? Yes. Is it an anonymous function? What's the name of the function? Append A. So what does anonymous mean? No name. So if there's a name to the function, it can't be an anonymous function. Right? The, fu the name of the function, append A, is append A. What's the name of this function? It's append A. What's the name of this function? It does not have a name. It's an anonymous function. So I could ask very, very easily, what is the name of this function? And I could put on the question S, function S, append A, or it's an anonymous function, or the function has no name, right? I could put any of those things. That would be a quiz question, right? Now I might have all of this code on the quiz that gives all this, and I'll say on line whatever it is, line 61, um, what is the name of the function passed to the map method? And one of the answers should be either the function has no name, or you would say it's an anonymous function, and that would be the correct answer. But you might say, well, hey, this is the same as append A, so somebody who doesn't know what I'm talking about wouldn't be able to answer the question. Okay, now take a look at this right here. What's the difference between append A, the anonymous function we just discussed on line 61, and this arrow function? It might, it might not be immediately apparent, but nothing. It does the same thing, just with fewer letters. Actually, I pulled in the extra. But that right there is the same as the other stuff. But it didn't require me to declare, it didn't require me to have a function definition. It didn't require me to pass all this stuff in there. It's just that. This is what you will see JavaScript programmers doing. They'll use arrow functions. You know, what the hell's going on in there? Is it an assignment statement? No, that's a function. Is it an anonymous function? 
Yeah, doesn't have a name, it's an anonymous function. How can you, I mean, I mean how many languages do you know where you can, uh, you can execute a function that doesn't have a name? <laughs> right? Now you're starting to get an inkling of how weird JavaScript is. So, um, so, th so these are basically doing the same thing, is the point. And then nothing says you have to have parameters. If, if, the, if the anonymous function, in this case it's not anonymous because we just assigned it to the word horn, but if this wasn't here, it would be an anonymous function, right? You just say open parentheses, close parentheses. I mean, this is flat freak people out. I thought, why is this working? Why is this running? Not only is it going to run, it's going to also, you can pass that as a parameter to something. Um, like it says here, there's no deep reason to have both arrow functions and function expressions. It's just a matter of typing. The people who wrote it said, you know, I don't want to type that much, so let's just be unique. Do you have to use arrow functions? No. The only reason I mention is you'll see them. If you use JavaScript, you're going to see them. So you may as well be aware of it. Okay, so the call stack, um, are you guys familiar with the call stack? So you kind of know that um, uh, the more functions you call within functions, within functions, within functions, it's going to like create a layers and layers of calls. Um, we don't need to go through all that. If you, if you do something like this, so you have uh, a function called chicken and it returns egg, and you have a function called egg and it returns chicken, if you try to you know, log the chicken, uh, it's, you know, the chicken calls the egg, the egg calls chicken, and pretty soon you pull the stack. Um, if you have, in, in, in JavaScript, if you have a bunch of arguments, that are defined for a function. Like here, we have square, and it just gives you two. If you, if, if you give too many arguments to a function, it ignores the ones that are after it. It just ignores them. If you forget, if it requires three of them, and you only give it two, the third one's going to be undefined when the program runs. And you can, of course, check to see if it's undefined. That's a, another thing that you can't do in a lot of languages, right? St strongly typed languages like Java, you can't check to see did you not pass the right number of parameters and did, is it not defined or whatever. If you want to set a default, you could just put it equals two at the end, like that. You can, put, you can just give it an assignment right in the top level, so that's kind of useful. I think it may be common to other languages. Now this one is for the people who really want to get an A in the class. If you can understand this, this paragraph or two, it's really a very short section, closure, just between closure and incursion, it's really like less than a page. If you understand this, you can hold your head high. Because this, you could, you very possibly even get an A in this class and not be able to explain this when you, when you get it, because it's not simple. But it, it can be done. You might have to read or reread it a couple of times. But basically, the ability to treat functions as values combined, the, con, combined with the, the fact that the local bindings are recreated when the function is called makes it possible to create this thing called closures. So <clears throat> let's think about this. When you, when in a normal perfect world or in, a, in an ideal world, you run a function and then when the function's finished, it goes away into the ether. Bye-bye. It doesn't exist anymore. But in JavaScript, it's not really gone. It's still there. And all the local environment that was happening is still there. So you run the function. Before you haven't run the function, it's not there. But once you've run it, it's kind of there still. So here we've got a function called wrap value. And it takes a parameter. And it's gonna, it creates this local uh, variable called n, you know, n, which is whatever was passed in, and it returns whatever that local value was. It actually, it returns a function, right, that is that local variable. So here is, we create, we wrap, wrap value, we, we create this, this, we create this um, identifier wrap one, 
and we assign it wrap value of one. Now, what is what's the data type of wrap one? We haven't got to the hard part yet, but believe me, this isn't easy either. Is it an integer? Let's assume n is an integer. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, is it, is it the function? Yes! Zero? Boom! Man, you should get extra credit for that. That's good. You, it, 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 we're returning it a function, right? This is That's one way of writing a function, and we're... and. It's not just any function. It's a function with no parameters, right? It's not taking any any uh, arguments. So yes, wrap one is a function. So guess wrap two is a function. So now, when we run the function wrap one, what's it going to give us? Yeah. Why? Yeah, that's correct. You're right. Rep one is going to give us one. Why? What is rep one doing? You're passing one to the argument. Let's just do it first. Function rep value. So we'll just create the local as one, and I'll return one. No, the, the, if if I say let local. If I say let local, is is the lo the word local is that going to be global scope or it's, scope. Lo it's going to be local scope? So when that function dies, that variable's gone, right? <laughs> yes. Do you program in JavaScript already? Uh, a couple times, but I don't think I've gotten into. This is a little bit headier than, I mean, that's why I'm not doing this in W3 schools. This, it, it is in there, but Eloquent JavaScript does a better job of explaining this, and I thought their examples were well worth showing you. Plus, you don't want to graduate from a JavaScript class and not have read this book, because even if you don't understand everything, just you want to say, yeah, I read it. I don't understand everything, but I read it. So, so, so yeah, so, so yeah, you've got this local variable, and now you're returning the function that's using that local variable. So the local variable is local. It's gone, right? But we've created, we've assigned it th that function to wrap one. So we run wrap value, and it generates this function, and it assigns to wrap one. So wrap one has all of the environmental information that came from when you ran wrap value. When you, if I run, if I just run wrap value, what happens? If I, did, if I if, instead of saying, if I just said wrap value one, and without saying let wrap one equal wrap value one, what, what would happen? It's going to return. One. It would assign the number one to the local variable, yeah. local, and it would, it would return a function but then it would be gone. Since you didn't assign to anything, it's not going to be used anywhere. It's gone. Right. But since we assigned that to a uh, to a um, uh, an identifier, all of the stuff that was that was happening in wrap value during that execution, it's all in that identifier. So, so, so like if you were to just run the function by itself and not assign the wrap value itself, function, it right? It never it is. It returns a value, but it never displays it. Yep. So it would it would return something, but it didn't it never took what was returned and assigned it to anything. A lot of languages you can run a function that has a return value, but if you don't store that return value somewhere, it just goes away. Same thing in JavaScript, right? But in this case, the, what was returned was a function, and one of the things in the function was the local variable of the wrap value function. So wrap one is a function that has the local variable of the wrap value function, but the wrap value function's gone. So even though it has the local value of the wrap value function when it was run. Even though it, that local variable local is a local value in that function, it's still there? Yes. I know that sounds a little bit cosmic, 
But when we start looking at what's in all of these functions and prototypes and prototypes and prototypes, you'll see that it has been stored in there. It's not magical, but it's a little bit non-intuitive. It goes, it, it goes, it flies in the face. That's why people, the more you learn these things, the more you can't make categorical statements. It's hard to just make a flat categorical statement. This is always true, you know. I want that thing I can count on. JavaScript is really hard. We can certainly say that it's possible to create run wrap value with one value, run wrap value with another value, and, the, and, and during the run times of those things, the, the values are different, and when we assign it to these two different identifiers, we have two different values now in there. Now that's a very, very simple example of stuff that gets, that gets a lot more complicated. So that's, so the, the, the ability to, um, the ability to, uh, to put a specific instance of a run of a program, assign that to a variable, that the ability to do that is called closure. And then the specific instance of it is a closure. So we would call wrap one a closure. And the ability of, 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 uh, of JavaScript to do this is closure. So, so somebody might say, like, well, what's, what's, what is closure or what is a closure? And you can say, you, you can think of it kind of like this, is that you can execute a run of a program. The program runs and goes away, but the, the environment of that program can still, if it was stored somewhere, when it was run, it can still be accessed. You can even increment variables. Like you can create a closure and you can add to a, a local variable of a program that's, that's been run and it's gone now. And there's reasons why you would do that. But anyway, so um, so local bindings and uh, that can be used even after the um, specific program has been run. So being able to reference a specific instance of a local binding is a closure and then function that represents the, the particular bindings is a closure. Okay, so... Um, you have to make it return a function. Yeah, you're going to have to use functions for the closure. You're not going to be able to just have uh, simple like, integers that would not be a closure. Um, now, let's take another example here. Take a look at this right here. We have a function called multiplier. And we have a parameter factor. What does what's the data type of the return value of the function multiplier? It's a function. So yep, it's a function. Arrow function. Yep. So, but the, I don't think that distinguishes between arrow functions. It's a function. Notation is the same. So yeah. So it's returning a function. Now, if I if I assign multiplier to to a identifier, in this case twice, what is going to be two? The factor. The factor. What, what the heck is number? Why is it, that, I mean, if you were to put that in almost any other language, function, multiply, factor, return number, the number, that's going to give you a syntax error. But in JavaScript, that's like perfect code, nice and clean, not too much typing. I mean, could you write, could you write a function definition, not narrow function, where you just say function something, open parentheses, something else, open, you know, open curly braces. Could you write, could you write a function that does this? How could we do that? Let's, let's try, I'll pop open notepad. I think I will. I will never understand why it takes so long to open up that. Like this. Never understand that. So let's let's say I want to create a function. I'm going to do a function definition. There it is. To open up Notepad. Now I've got two of them open. So here we we have function multiplier. Now. <coughs> Um, how can I write, we, we talked about uh, a, a, a you know, function definition and then one of the assignment type functions, but let's just make a function definition 
um, that uh, would that would do just this a function definition for that we have a function definition for multiplier let's make a function de definition for this return instead of saying return number arrow number star factor what could I say I could say return function number yep we, we would say um, return number times factor but that was good no that was hey, that was good and you got to have a semicolon here well and you got to have a semicolon here like I told you most of the time, well, no, it'll run. You do need to have you do need to have this this um, because this is a return statement. You need to have this here. I think I don't know. I better not say that because there's probably exceptions to it. But you're supposed you know to be right about it. You're supposed to. Have, this is a statement. This is a JavaScript statement. This JavaScript statement is telling the function to return all this, which is just a function. And, the, and and you know it just returns the number to the fact. So, so so this number arrow number star factor is just the same as this. They're interchangeable. Hopefully that's clear. Okay. Oh, we don't have time to do everything else. Let's see. Um, we don't have time to do recursion. Um, but but hey, listen. If you can get closure under your under your uh, belt. If you can understand what a closure is and what closure the concept is and what a closure is, you are really doing great. It's not easy to do, especially the first time you heard of it. But if you can get your head around that and you can start playing around with functions like that, you're going to be in great shape. We didn't have to cover this later because I don't have time to go through the rest of the chapter. Um, but we'll leave it at that and we'll cover the rest of it next week. Any questions about this? All right, we'll see you next week.